Hey guys, EBG Man here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at the Artillery Hornet. We're going to take a look at the specs, we're going to look at the features, we're going to take a look at the print quality, and I'm going to help you decide if this is going to be your first 3D printer. Let's get right to it. Now, the Artillery Hornet is a very striking printer because of the color. You have to face it, this bright yellow stands out, and you're either going to love it or you're not. And at first, I thought that I would probably not like the yellow, but I've come to really enjoy the overall look and how it stands out from my other printers. But not only does it stand out in its color, but one of the things that it does really well is it fades away. I say that it fades away because this printer prints really quiet. And if you don't have a dedicated space like I do for printing, you may be having your printer in a common area in your home, and having something that is ultra quiet is really important. This printer operates super quiet, and you can have it anywhere in your home. The other thing is the build plate. The build plate is relatively large. You're looking at a 220 by 220 by 250. Uh, this is going to give you enough space to build um, something as large as this, or even larger. Uh, vases, as you can see here in some of the prints. And then I've also been able to print uh, full-size cosplay, I would say, helmets and gear that you're going to see in a couple seconds using this printer that would fit my head. And that is something to say for something of this size. So you have the actual size, you have the speed as well, and you have something that's ultra quiet. So let's take a look at some of the other features that make this printer stand out. Now there's another part of the Utility Hornet that really stands out, and that's the whole filament loading and printing solution. So your filament loads on the side, uh, you can see that that's pretty standard, uh, comes up, do this dual uh, Titan drive, but then it goes into an integrated Bowden tube that goes connected to your print head. Uh, this is all integrated and has all the wiring, so you have no additional cabling except for this one right here, so everything is integrated. Now, it has uh, some benefits, but it also has some challenges. One of the things that I found, especially due to the fact that this printer does not have a filament, uh, I would say, detection system that identifies when you're out of filament, that when this runs out and this filament loads in, there's no way to remove the filament. You literally have to just unscrew this here so that you can get the filament out and load in the new filament. So it's really important that you monitor the filament, how much you have when you're doing your print jobs. And for my case, I probably wouldn't print something at night unless I have a full roll that I'm working with. That's just one of the challenges that you're gonna find. Now for all these prints, I use Cura 4.9 uh, to print everything that you see here. Now you're not going to find the actual profile for the Utility Hornet in the actual Curio system, but what you can do is looking at the included SD is import the profiles that are found there and you should print without a problem. Now from a print perspective, the printer did a fantastic job and as you all know, the most important layer to print is that very first layer. I had great adhesion, I didn't have to use anything extra, nothing on the build plate, no tape. Uh, it heated up well and it heated up evenly and everything stuck right out of the box. Now this does feature manual leveling so you don't have any kind of BL touch assistant and there's no auto leveling here but the manual leveling worked well. Now I've been running this build plate around 70 uh, and then the print at 210. That's because uh, here in, in where I have my printing taking place I have uh, a lot of air going on and it's pretty cool so I want to make sure that I keep things um, hot enough to make sure that I have good adhesion and also good print. But again, no issues whatsoever. Now I'm also running in all of these prints, I have two filament types that I'm running, both of them from JO. Uh, and I have, as you can see here, this one which is kind of like a gold. And then I also have one over here. And this one right here is a red copper. And you can see what that looks like right there. So we have a red copper and a gold, both of them running at 210 with the actual uh, heat bed running at 70. Now getting your prints on the printer is simple, uh, but you have to use an SD, which is different than the Sidewinder, which uses a USB. The other thing is that the actual screen is, itself is a monochrome screen. It's not a touch screen, and it actually uses a dial to select all the entries. Now, accessing and using it is relatively simple. The one thing I wish is that they change the order of the actual print function. It's actually at the very bottom, so if you're going to print, you kind of have to dial all the way down to select print on media. Now all of these prints were done with the standard Cura settings that were provided to us by Artillery for the actual Hornet. No adjustments, no tweaking, because I wanted to give you what it would look like out of the box. Now I'm sure with some adjustments and some refinement, you can get better print quality. Uh, so a couple things we'll take a look at. First of all, uh, we did uh, this vase, and this was the one that I had mentioned that I tested to see how the filament sensor would work, or the lack of a filament sensor would work, what the impact would be. Um, overall quality was great, and I have to say, I'm going to flip this over, I have some, some screws in here, 
uh, that the first layer is fantastic, as you can see right here. Now, the overall detail was great. Everything looked fine. But one of the things, and again, this was done on purpose, I actually was using a uh, filament spool that had very little filament, and I wanted to see what would happen and how I could recover from it running out, or could I recover? And what I found is I couldn't, because the actual filament ended up ending inside of the Bowden tube, and there was no way to continue. So I had to start from scratch. My second print uh, was, again, using the JO print, uh, or the JO filament here, again, running at 210 with the build plate at 70. This is what I got out of it. Great, great, again, um, no issues. N there was no webbing. There was no hair at all anywhere. Um, it uh, has a, I think, an infill of 15, and it took about six hours to, to print. So great quality here. Now, we also then printed this. Actually, this was printed last night. Uh, this took around eight hours to do, and you can see uh, the overall quality here. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And the neat thing about this is that as soon as the build plate started to cool, the print just came off. And that's been my experience with all the prints. As soon as the build plate starts getting cool, it comes off. And you can see the overall quality. There are no supports with this. This was just printed as is. And the same thing is true for everything here. Now, this cup that we have here was also printed without supports. Uh, with, actually, yeah, let me correct something. I had two painted supports here, very thin supports here, and then three painted down here. And you can see that I can still actually clean that up just a little bit. But overall, this was really good. Because this is going to be a mug, I actually increased the infill on this to 40. So this has a 40 infill. And it, while it has some seaming and some problems here in the back, I'm sure that if I tweak the profile, it would come out just fine. Now, the last two prints I'm going to share with you, one turned out fantastic and the other one, not so great, but this was my mistake. So we used a rainbow filament here. And this rainbow filament, you can see how great this looks. This is a vase. It's actually a solid vase, so there is um, nothing or no hole here. But you can, again, once again, see you know, just a great finish that you get at the very top. And also on the bottom, I thought we had great, um, I would say, a great first layer. No supports whatsoever with this one. Now, this last one that we have here, um, I had some trouble. This was my fault, though. I'm just going to show you how I printed it. Uh, what I did is I printed it in this fashion, upside down, um, to get the mask in place. And if we take a look at the mask, you can see how you can build, like, full-size masks. All right. So if it wasn't because of this failure, and this was my fault with the actual supports, this would have been a great mask that would come out in this print. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Artillery Hornet. See you in the next one.